Hello and welcome to another Bear Beer Review. Uh, this is actually my second one of the night. Uh, I've just finished the Oakham Citrus, so go and check that video out as well uh, if you haven't done so already and um, see all about that one. But the beer we're going to go for now is actually the Amplifuff Abbey Beer. Uh, I heard a lot about this when it first came out. A lot of people say, oh, England's getting its first Trappist beer, England's getting its first Trappist beer. How amazing is that? That's brilliant. And quite a lot of my friends were saying, were saying that, and like, oh, it's going to be brewed by monks, and it's, it's brewed in Ampleforth Abbey, and how how amazing is that? We've got to get our hands on some. Uh, so, lo and behold, walking down my local major brand supermarket, and on the shelf is a bottle of this going for a reduced price, because I'm assuming that they mispicked it, or they picked it wrong. Um, it's well, well, well within date, not that, not that this would go out of date, it's a bottle-conditioned beer, bottle-conditioned double. Um, Best before November 14, so um, you know why they're selling it off so cheap. I do not know, but I got it for a ridiculously nice sum of 85 pence for a 7% beer. Whatever, I'm not going to complain. But as I was saying, this is a beer brewed for an out brewed for and before Abbey. So as you can probably tell by my terminology already, this isn't this isn't going to get the Trappist seal of approval. This is brewed by Little Valley Brewery uh, in West Yorkshire under the contract of Ampleforth Abbey. So this is brewed for Ampleforth, which still means that it could be technically classed as an, as an Abbey beer, as it says on the front, because it's brewed in the style of Trappist beers. Um, it says on the side that the story behind this beer, and I'll paraphrase it just to tell you, is that um, some Benedictine monks fled the Reformation in England uh, and settled down in France for a while and started brewing an English beer, beer anglaise. Um, which they double fermented and had a champagne like sparkle. And then they escaped the French Revolution and came back to England again and set up at Fourth Abbey. And they have found one of the original recipes and made this beer based on one of those original recipes. So we can assume at least it's got some kind of heritage to it. And I hope it's true. It's a nice little story, if not anyway. So here we are, it's a Belgian double. Um, let's crack it up and give it a shot. Bottle condition, like I said. And. I've got my Strapper Hendrick glass because we're going to go Belgian, we might as well use a Belgian glass, or should I say we're going to go Belgian Trappist style, we might as well use a Trappist style glass. Being gentle with the pour, we'll try and keep the yeast out, even though I like my yeast and I always say it, I mean, Matt will like this, uh, Matt from the Hot Studio will like this one, because uh, I've taken his advice and not put the yeast in, it's still in the glass, it's still in the bulb. So there we go, it's like a, a deep, deep... Um, Ruby colour. It's, it's kind of like I've I've heard. Um, you know, it's kind of like a raisin colour, uh, raisin flesh sort of colour. The light's still coming through the sides of it. It's not completely black. It's it's kind of a slightly off purpley colour. A nice little tan head as well. Uh, about a finger there, and as you can see, it's lacing sticking down to the sides of the glasses as well. Um, there's a little, quite a lot of carbonation. You can just about see it pop in through the bottom of the glass as well there. Uh, so let's go our nose and give it a smell. Hmm, interesting. Uh, I can smell a lot of Belgian yeast esters on the nose with this one. And a lot of dark fruit as well, kind of like plums, and, and particularly, even though I mentioned raisins once already in this review, raisiny nose. Uh, quite a bit of an alcoholic burn on the nose as well. Um, which I guess lends itself to the 7% that we're finding here. Uh, yeah, it is 7%, isn't it? Yes, it is indeed. And also kind of like a bit of chocolate and almost like a sort of nutty smell on the nose too. But overall it seems to be dominated by um, that kind of uh, 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 that kind of alcoholic, alcoholester sort of smell. And uh, and Belgian yeast too. So it smells, it does smell pretty good. It smells pretty authentic as a Belgian double style beer. So uh, let's get in there and give it a try. Cheers. Hmm. That's a bit unusual. So first and foremost on the palate, 
I'm getting a bit of kind of chocolate malt flavour and then it sends into those raisiny dark fruity flavours that I was talking about <clears throat> and then you get a bit, a little bit of roast flavour coming through and then you get a weird unusual sort of bitterness and then you get a lot of water I mean a lot of water the, 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 the flavour on this lasts for about a, less than a second and then it dissipates really quickly into a very bland, very weak, very watery mouthfeel and if you know Belgian doubles and they're supposed to be thick and juicy and heavy or at least in my opinion that's what I expect from a Belgian double it's a nice rich deep and chocolatey and raisiny and Belgian yeast estery sort of flavours um, but this one just lacks, completely lacks body uh, and has a, a really flaccid carbonation as well There's also a little bit, I kind of got it on the nose as well, almost like a semi sort of dark cherry flavour, like a black cherry flavour coming through too. But the, the mouthfeel really lets this down, it really lets this down. Uh, I should also mention too um, that that bitterness actually, now, now I've tasted it more, it, it's that alcohol that I could smell on the nose. That's what's causing this bitterness, it's an unusual kind of alcohol. And I'm not sure if I'm quite pleased with it. Uh, it it's very, very, very astringent bitterness. It's not a well, it's not a balanced bitterness, if that's right in saying. If you try some some beers, the, the, the bitterness has been almost like it's been under conditioned or something like that. And it needs longer in the bottle or needs to be just left to sit for a little bit longer to get rid of some of this excess bitterness. It still feels green almost in, in bittering or it just all the whoever's brewed the Little Rock, who, is it, sorry, little, little Valley who brewed this have just used a little bit too much hops that's just made it a little unbalanced in terms of bitterness. So it's overly bitter and it's got this weak and flaccid watery mouthfeel. I can't describe to you how bad the mouthfeel is when you see a beer that looks like that and it comes into your mouth and it's so wet and weak. I've, I've you know, it, Black, I've had black IPAs with double the double <laughs> the thickness of mouthful of this, and I expect a black IPA to have none of you know be nowhere near as thick as a porter or stout in terms of mouthfeel. So uh, that's two little negatives there, but the positive is that the the initial flavours uh, of the, of the malt are, are very pleasant, and um, the deep dark fruit flavour also too is very pleasant. Sorry, and the deep dark fruit flavours. But that unusual bitterness, it also kind of tastes maybe like a like burnt sort of bitterness, like a charcoal y, ashy sort of bitterness, too. Um, and that's, it just, just doesn't, it's just something's not right with it. Something just isn't right with it. It's not clicking perfectly for me. Uh, it's a crying shame because this is such a an interesting beer to see coming out of a little abbey or a brewery that's brewing for a little abbey just the idea that they've kind of thought we're going to embrace our heritage and we're going to produce this beer and you know it's going to have so much links a link with the past and it's going to have so much interest around it and then to the, the, the product's just substandard it just doesn't it all doesn't add up and it, it kind of doubles the you know, I was expecting such a good experience with this beer uh, in terms of the story and the heritage of it and also the flavour and it's just let it all down completely really. Um, it, oh, I'm gonna, it's quite hard to, to even rate this. I think I'd have to give it a 5 out of 10. Uh, I see where it's going, I see where it should be and I hope that the brewers see where it should be or want to adapt this recipe and, and try and make it I don't know. I just think this recipe needs a little bit of work on it. It's definitely got the founding, the footing of of something that, that could be very, very good. Just some, some. It just doesn't all add up. That 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 unusual bitterness and and a very, very lacklustre mouthfeel really let it down. Uh, you know, there's a two two of the major things that you expect. The aroma was really nice, and the vast majority of the taste was very pleasant as well. But you can't. You can't get away with not having with having a, a bad bittering and bad mouthfeel. 
Um, so yeah, 5 out of 10, hopefully maybe further batches of this will have improved in those respects and I'm sure I'm sure it'll be better. Maybe, maybe it'd even be a good idea to age this beer, age this beer for, for, for a while and, and see what you get a few years down the road. In fact, that might be an idea that I'll, I'll go and pick up one of the cheap bottles and, and try and age it. So yeah, um, you know, tell me what you think if you've tried this beer, uh, if you like it, uh, and tell me why. Uh, I'm definitely up to up to a debate if anyone wants to have a debate with that. And um, comment, favorite, like, subscribe, all of the above. And until the next beer review, cheers.